you've ever had the dream of building an off-grid cabin, you've got to see this place. Jay and Jen built this completely 100% debt-free and with no experience. So if you always thought that this is a dream that was out of reach for you, stay tuned. I think you're going to be inspired. Your biggest challenge? The siding that we milled ourselves that neither Jen or I had any experience building. We're gonna do like a little kitchen that the bedroom idea. The bathroom. Rather than yeah, a little pulley up there. You know, because normally you do entryway. In the middle. This land was completely overgrown. I mean, it hadn't been visited or really used in 20 years since the early 90s, so or late 90s. So there was uh, a lot of overgrowth like the first month or so. We had to uh, clear the road and it was a lot of work. <laughs> he had a friend come and cut a bunch of trees down too, right? We did most of it by hand and then he came and uh, used a skid steer and kind of pulled some stumps for us. If I were to guess what the grade is, I'd say it's about 30%. It's steeper than it looks. Even, even in the summer, the road's slippery driving down it. Like yeah, when it's raining, yeah. it's muddy and scary. <laughs> you gotta, gotta be very careful. Uh, we drive the truck up here most of the year, but once the uh, snow comes, we use the snowmobiles. When we were looking for property, we needed to stay on a budget, obviously, and the first piece of property we found was five acres, so that made it affordable, and it's off the beaten path. So no utilities or maintained roads, so that makes the price uh, something we could handle. Yay, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we're Jay and Jen. Welcome to our cabin. It was always Jay's dream since we start, when we started dating. He wanted to build a cabin in the woods. In order to save up for this cabin and this property, we it took a lot of time. It took many, many years. We were looking for something. A big thing was to have one of our cell phones work here. I went to school for my teaching degree and I tried to get a job as a teacher and it didn't work out. And now I tutor online, so that's nice because I can do it up here. I've owned a business for the last 20 years, a small business, and I worked for them for a couple years, and then I acquired the business. It allowed me to save up money, and we paid off all our debts. We've always enjoyed the flexibility of being able to do what we want when we want. Don't live extravagant lives. We do a, you know, a few fun things every year, just like anybody else. We both drive 15-year-old cars and uh, just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Not, nothing extravagant. So after we had bought the first piece of property, uh, we'd spent a good year here and noticed that none of the neighbors were around and not a lot of people were around. So I went onto the uh, public record, found the information that we needed for the neighboring properties and ended up calling those people. And it worked out great. It took over a year and a half from start to finish. The gentleman that had bought this piece of property sold it to us fairly affordably and he didn't want to sell it at first but after eight nine months he called me back and said I'm ready to sell and we purchased it the next day. Using that method we acquired uh, 15 acres in total uh, three five acre lots. They just call the worst they're gonna say is no. <laughs> yeah. And they do say no sometimes and then then they call you back. <laughs> yeah. The building of the cabin started in the spring of 2020. Uh, we had spent a couple, year, a couple years here at this point, and we didn't plan on building, but there wasn't much else to do at that time, so we decided to go, and we did. And mm -hmm. It worked out great. Not, neither Jen or I had any experience building uh, prior to this cabin. Complete rookies. <laughs> you watched your guys' videos. That's what he always talked about when we were building this. This was girl yeah. in the woods style. This is bush, bush radical, radical style. style. Yep. So that's how he did it all. <laughs> he learned from you guys. <laughs> uh, you have to not be afraid to try new things. Not having a lot of money and stuff, you have to do a lot of stuff yourself and you have to learn new tasks or new uh, skills. And nothing's different with building either. We started with the bathhouse down at camp and that was a simple little six by eight building. And that's how we learned and then we went Big. Big. Bigger. <laughs> so this wasn't supposed to be as elaborate 
either. This got a little crazier than we expected, but we love it. it took three years to get to this point, but yeah. Jen, Jen's learned a lot of the outdoor things the last few years. I like learning stuff, and building's no different. Same thing with solar, everything. I mean, I always have a little bit of experience with stuff, electrical, plumbing, stuff like that, uh, with my work. Just learn a little bit as you go, and experiment with stuff. Trial and error sometimes. Yep. Sometimes you fail, but that's okay. Yeah, when we when we started out, every little thing was took forever because you don't know what you're doing, so you're, every little task takes twice as long. And then now that we've been doing this for two to three years building, uh, we put up a mud room or a pole barn or add, put an addition onto the cabin, and those tasks all went way better. Way better. Yes. <laughs> so nothing's perfect. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, we don't strive for perfection here. It's perfectly imperfect. Yep. <laughs> I would say the biggest challenge would be building together with your spouse because then you really learn that you love them <laughs> because it's a very big challenge and doing everything on a budget because we didn't yes. go into debt on anything. So those would probably be our two biggest challenges. That would be my biggest challenge is trying to find good deals, paying for everything out of pocket. We kept the budget down really good on this whole build. Every project we found a good deal on something to kind of level it out. We couldn't really afford to, to go crazy or buy a big property all at once. This whole project set us back and cost probably $60,000, including the property. So we built a cabin, 400 square foot cabin originally, and then we made some additions and we have about $25,000 into that build. And I'd say five grand into the pole barn. But then the property was around 22000 as well. So we have $55,000, $60,000 into this entire property and everything on it. We, we did do a cost video a couple years, like a couple years ago, and we included like, we said we spent $50,000, but that included every machine, tractor, you know, side by side, every single thing we had purchased uh, for the property to get things done and the sawmill. You know, sawmill was a $4,000 uh, investment, purchase. Yeah. investment, but we built our whole deck and all our siding and all our beams and every like 75% of everything was milled uh, yeah. for the cabin build on mm -hmm. our mill. So it was a good investment. Yes. yes. Saved us lots of money. Yep. It's our best investment. Yep. This sounds silly, but I would say the number one tool for me is a truck. Sounds ridiculous, but I mean, I've beat my truck up for the last five years, toting stuff, towing stuff, pulling stuff, going and collecting firewood and buying stuff for the property. Uh, you can't really do it without a truck. You need a good truck to be in the woods. Another super important tool, which I always made fun of people watching videos prior to being on this experience or this adventure, was I used to make fun of people with side-by-sides. But with having this cabin up on the hill and having base camp down, we use that side by side so much. The same thing, you know, towing around firewood, towing around the splitter, to just it's basically a mobile toolbox. So that side by side is worth Helpful its weight too. in gold. <laughs> worth its weight in gold for sure. I'm thinking about this a while ago. I've had this iPhone. So our outhouse is nothing super fancy, just a five, six foot hole in the ground. We dug it down into the sand, put the outhouse on a couple of runners and built right on top of that and it's just as simple simple as it comes siding that we milled ourselves and you know we had some old barn metal left from when we did the wood stove inside yeah we use scraps for scraps and leftover stuff from from building the cabin really cost us like 100 or 200 bucks to build the outhouse uh, we put a ventilation in up, up top we use a little bit of sawdust every few days and really it's not anything like you would expect I mean, you, everybody goes to these pit toilets and stuff and expects them to smell and have odors. This really isn't that bad at all. I don't mind outhouses. I don't mind anything. I just don't want to go in the woods. So nice and easy. Last winter, we built an, in, an indoor bathroom, but it has just a shower and a sink. And it has a small composting toilet for Jen so she doesn't have to come out here. So we don't have to come out here at night. I don't use it, but she uses it. But this It'll, is our main this bathroom. This is our main bathroom, yep. No number twos or anything inside. All number twos <laughs> and everything out here. So it makes it for a nice, easy system. So we have a little solar light up there to guide the way at night. And then we have a little solar panel there that charges the indoor motion light. So it's not 100% done. Again, we've been using scraps of our leftover pine tongue and groove from interior projects and just kind of finishing it as we have extras. 
I did all the pine tugging so, grove this fall. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing fancy. This is one thing that solves a lot of off-grid problems, okay? If you have two toilet paper rolls and one of you is an over and one of you is an under, um, <laughs> this an solves old. a lot of drama <laughs> in the world of off-gridders. All right, come on in. I'll show you inside. All right. How do you like Jen's mudroom? Nice. This was her requirement this year. Oh, it's beautiful. It smells so good. It smells like, you know, fresh cut lumber. Oh, isn't this lovely? Oh, it's so warm in here. <laughs> nice. Oh, ooh, it's chilly outside. <laughs> so the the main platform or whatever of the cabin is uh, 16 by 24, so it's just under 400 square 400 feet. Square feet. And we put a nice uh, steep peak on the roof so we could have a loft uh, in the upstairs. And it makes it seem bigger in here. Yeah. We didn't want to build any smaller than this because we thought we would have regrets. You know, better to just go a little bit bigger and not have regrets. Mm -hmm. So uh, originally we were going to just have like a bedroom over where the kitchen was or is. And we were going to do like a little kitchenette and have a boxed in area and then we just made decisions as we went uh changed things up i convinced jen to get rid of the bedroom idea and i told her we could put a bedroom in the loft and then she changed her mind and it said we had to build a bedroom too hot the in the side. loft yeah it's too hot in the summer it's too hot in the winter yeah. <laughs> so the loft turned into storage so you have square footage up there 150 square foot of storage up in the loft which we use primarily as storage, storage now, now. <laughs> yeah uh, eventually this summer or this winter project will be to you know organize that and put like guest sleeping quarters in there mm -hmm. but we have to do all our indoor projects in the winter <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is our little kitchen this here is just a regular fridge just runs off of electric plugs into our electricity system and works off the solar you don't need a fancy propane fridge it only cost us 300 dollars. this is a propane stove and normally we have a water collection from the rain and that's how we get our water we have gutters and collect the water and it goes through a whole system but since it's winter now this is how we get our water to wash dishes we melt snow on the wood stove and then dump it in here and that's how we wash dishes and we run that water through the Berkey so we have it for cooking and drinking and coffee. Um, the sink just drains into a gray water system over on the other side of the cabin. Most of the year we cook on here and then in the winter time we will cook a stew or a chili on the wood stove because it's nice to do. These are absolutely beautiful countertops. It's live edge pine. Jay got from somebody on Marketplace. Found a good deal on it and made it into counters. So the whole cabin is run on our solar system outside. Uh, we have the cabin wired like a typical house with an AC breaker box. And then we run the power from the solar shed. It converts it over to AC power and runs it into the cabin. So we have about 2,000 watts of solar panels and we have eight AGM batteries, just lead acid batteries that uh, we can store quite a bit of power. We can run the whole cabin for two to four days uh, with no sunshine. And then if we get sunshine, it'll charge it right back up in one day. So if you can minimize the amount of power you use, you can get away with a nice solar system and not have to spend a fortune. <laughs> Everybody has a huge misconception of solar and how much you have to spend. Uh, you really don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars. We have about $4,000 into our solar system, and you could power a vacation home or a little getaway with it, or like we do, and just minimize stuff. Just don't go crazy with extra stuff, uh, extra appliances and stuff. The refrigerator runs great. Mm -hmm. Everything runs great. No problems. Um, I learned how to build a solar system just by watching YouTube channels. A lot of the popular guys that do... Uh, you know, show you solar systems on YouTube. And I started small. I bought a two, three hundred dollar system off of, you know, online and just started with one battery, one panel, 
and an inverter and that was it and then after you kind of figure out a small system you just up it from there go a little bigger every time learn as you go that's kind of we kind of wing it here that's our motto winging it and learning as we go nothing wrong with that if you wait till if you wait for everything to be perfect and You're never perfect gonna get situation, it done. it'll never happen so just start just go but we decided to add a bedroom on and that is what we spent summer of 2022 doing show it to check it out so this bedroom is 11 by 12. uh funny thing is is when i did my calculations i did it wrong so the roof is a little bit of, at a, less of an angle than we anticipated but it's uh it works out great the way we set up the layout and once we got it all laid out we decided we had to bump out even one more time and add the bathroom to the corner over here yes <laughs> so here's our tiny off-grid cabin bathroom it's only four foot by five foot people had uh <laughs> questions whether we were going to be able to make it work but we fit it all in there and we're very happy with the way it turned out uh, the showers i believe 42 by 36 so it gives you enough room to move around in there and do your thing and jen made it nice i didn't want something boring I fought him on it. It was a big source of an argument last year. He wanted <laughs> simple and easy, and I wanted fancy. <laughs> I get you. I get you, Jen. I like the fancy, too. It is absolutely a gorgeous little bathroom, and that is amazing. You said it's four by what? Five. Four by five. It's right. so yeah. pretty. Good job. It's just absolutely beautiful. Our water system's all operated off like an RV, 12-volt RV pump pressure regulated pump so there's a little pressure switch on there so when we open a, a valve or a turn on the shower turn on the uh, bathroom sink or kitchen sink it just automatically kicks on just like an rv just like a camper uh, the whole cabin is pretty much set up like an rv because it's simple and it's what i could handle and easy to operate we have a uh, on-demand hot water heater outside that runs off propane yes we probably can we could take showers for Five or six weeks on a 20 pound propane tank i mean it's very efficient everything's mm -hmm. pretty efficient the same thing with the kitchen stove like we've cooked for a year on a 100 pounder and it's not even half full so you can run an off-grid cabin and cook with propane very efficiently a few weeks ago we had to winterize the cabin and we go back to old school style we have a couple of pots uh, that we put on the wood stove and we're constantly melting water and we fill up the dishwater tub, the Berkey for drinking water, and then we take the the pan straight from the wood stove, bring it in here, and we use our twenty dollar little shower in a bucket system, and it works just fine. Yep. It's a little more work, but it's not. Uh, you it's know, a lot more work, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't realize how much snow you need to get a bucket of water until you actually have to melt it. <laughs> built this barn door myself this summer <laughs> using some pine tongue and groove and some one by two super easy it's my first building project solo on my own <laughs> yay good job it's beautiful thank you what advice would you give someone that would want to do an off-grid cabin like this just do it like don't think about it stop saying i'll do it one day you don't wait for everything to be perfect because you'll never do it don't live forever <laughs> That's one thing. People just say they're going to do it when they retire. I wouldn't wait that long. It's a lot of work, like, doing all this, and you no guarantees. Yep. No one's promised tomorrow. Uh, we're off-grid with Jay and Jen. We've been doing the YouTube thing for three years now. If you guys want to check us out, we'd love to have you. Yeah. Off-grid with Jay and Jen. Well, guys, hope you liked the video. I'll see you in the next one. This girl in the woods, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.